John chapter 6, just for one verse. And if you have a, a Bible tonight with the words of, with words in red written in them, that means that these are the words that the Lord Jesus himself spoke. So you would notice that this verse that I'm going to read, verse 47, is in red. It's the Lord Jesus who said these words. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. A simple statement. He that believes on me has everlasting life. You know, and he prefaces it with the words, truly, truly, something that you can believe in, something to believe in. You know, the, we, the, the Lord Jesus um, came from heaven to, to, uh, to speak to every one of us, to meet every, for every one of us. He didn't come from heaven just for the Jews, but the verse at my right hand explains why the Lord Jesus came. It, it tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came for everyone. So I'd like to read now in John chapter 4, just back a couple of chapters, a story about a woman. Okay, so in verse 3, it's talking about Jesus. It says, Jesus left Judea, and he departed again into Galilee, and he had to go through Samaria. So, so the, there was a road between Jerusalem and Galilee, that, and it passed through Samaria. But I would suggest there's another reason he had to go through Samaria. Then verse 5 says, And he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Joseph's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, or noon. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away from the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that you, being a Jew, as drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? Jesus answered and said unto her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that says to you, give me to drink. You would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then have you got that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Jesus said, Go call your husband and come back, come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. In that you said the truth. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called the Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. 
and upon and so and then and uh, so it says and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman yet no man said what are you seeking or why are you talking with her the woman so they didn't speak speak to either the woman or the lord jesus the woman le then left her water pot, pot and went her way into the city and said to the man come see a man which told me all things uh, that ever i did um, so in verse 39 says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of that woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would stay with them. And he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. You know, the Lord, it says the Lord Jesus had to go through Samaria. The Lord Jesus is the Son of God. The Lord Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. You know, he, he was born of the Virgin Mary. It says the Spirit of God overshadowed her and, and the angel told her that that Holy One that would be born of you shall be called the Son of God, the Lord in the highest. He, the Bible tells us over and over again that he is the Son of God, God, that he himself is God. You know what that means if he says he himself is God? We all know what the definition of God is, I'm sure omniscient he's all powerful um uh, 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 sorry omniscient means he's all knowing uh, uh, omnipotent means he's all, all powerful <laughs> and uh omnipresent he's all he's everywhere at the same time so that what that means is god knows about each and every one of us he made us before the foundation of the world. He planned us before the foundation of the world. He planned you and he planned me. He planned every one of us in his mind and his purposes. For, for eternity, he planned every person that ever walked on the face of the earth. And he loved them. He, he, he created them with a great purpose and an aim in view. That they would be able to be with him forever to know his presence, to know God, and to worship before him as, 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 is our, as is his right as our creator. That was his purpose for every person that had ever worked on the face of the earth. But you know, the, the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve, our forefathers, sinned against God and they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. And because of that, all his descendants came forth from a sinful creature, from a man who had fallen and sinned against God, rebelled against God. And every one of us comes into this world as a rebel in our hearts and in our minds against God. But God is searching for each and every one of us, the one that he knows he searches for. And you know, this is the story of his search for one woman. One woman, you know, all the way from Jerusalem, all the way on the way to Galilee, he came to this one spot and sat at this one well and waited until this one woman came to draw water and his disciples were gone away. He had a meeting between her and him. That was why he had come. You know, he could have gone other roads through Samaria, but I believe that that was why he came. And you know, more than anything else tonight, he's, you know, he's omniscient and omnipresent, like we've been saying, every, he's, watching every person constantly over the, on the whole face of the world unbelievable but true or he wouldn't be god 
If he couldn't do that, would he? So he was watching over this woman. He knew when she was going to come to that well. He knew what she was going to do to that well, do at that well. And you know, she, she acknowledges to the townspeople, come and see a man who told her everything that I did. In the words that we read, did it seem like he told her everything that she did? That's what she said, because he laid his hand on her life and he spoke to her as only she knew that he could speak. Only he could speak to her to touch her heart the way he did. He was sitting on that well and along she comes and she, he says to her, woman, give me a drink. You know, she was a she was the first. It was he he started he he touched her heart right from the beginning. Give me a drink, and he said. She said to him, "Why are you dealing with a talking to a Samaritan? You know, we, the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. No, she had seen the religion of Jerusalem on the road that passes by." Maybe the Pharisees had walked by. Maybe the Levites and the priests had walked by and stopped at that well and she comes out and they turn their back on her. There's a Samaritan woman. I don't want anything to do with that woman. I'm not even going to go near it. I'll wait till that woman has left the well and then I'll go draw my water. That was the religion she knew. What dealings do you have with me, a Samaritan? You know, the message that the Bible has is not something that makes one man better than another or one woman better than another. The, mes the message of the Bible is makes us all equal in the eyes of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But all are loved of that same God. And so this this woman, she's suspicious of him. You know, what, 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 are you what are you talking to me for? He, he must want something, she thinks. But right away, the Lord Jesus changes direction of the whole thing. She's, look, she's thinking, I wonder what he wants from me. You know, all whatever. But he says, um, uh, Jesus answered and said unto her, ver verse 10, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. You know, it wasn't the Jews' religion. It wasn't what, what, what you have to do. It was what God was going to do for her. He had come to give her something, something that it didn't cost her anything, but something that she needed more than anything. Now well, picture that woman's life. Now, why did she come to draw water? Did she come to draw it for her family and herself? Did she have a business maybe that she brought water out to the townspeople? But every day in her life, back to the village, back to the well, back to the village, back to the well. You know, isn't that all our lives? We go to work, we go to university, we go to, we, we have a, raise a family, we buy a house, we go in debt for this, we, all the things that we do, but what's the purpose to it? She must have thought to herself, is this all my life coming up this hill every day to draw this, down this, hill and going back up every day that would have been that way I guess in a, a well down the hill to get the water up the hill with the full jar of water to bring it back to the village is that all my life is you know he touched her right away what is the purpose of my life but he offered her something that she'd never heard about before I will give you living water but 
she she doesn't so so uh she says to him in verse 11 sir you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence then have you this living water are you greater than her father jacob which gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle jesus answered and said unto her whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drinks of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life so she's just thinking about that life she's just thinking how can i make my life easier she's just thinking you know maybe it'll deliver me for some of this drudgery if there was such a thing but he's telling her it's not about this life it's a well of water springing up into everlasting life you know i gave out that hymn if i could only tell him as i know him because what was happening here is the lord jesus was trying to tell her about something that you can't touch you can't handle it you can't park it in your garage you can't buy it at the store it was something intangible, but something of the greatest value, everlasting life. Do you know if I could only explain to you or anyone could explain to you how wonderful it is the moment that you realize from what the word of God says that Jesus died for my sins on the cross, that he paid for every one of them, that he rose from the dead the third day he's a seated right in, up in heaven and he who cannot lie the son of god promises he that believes on me has everlasting life you know the peace the joy the satisfaction the purpose it gives purpose not just for this life but for a life that is ever ending. My dear friend, he put these things before this woman, but she didn't understand. She said, she says, um, give, give me this water that, uh, so Jesus said unto, so after that, the woman says, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Just thinking in human terms. But he says to her, woman, Go call your husband. And then she says, answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, verse 17, you have well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. And that said you truly. So he got to the real problem. The real problem why she didn't have this living water why she couldn't understand what this living water was why she couldn't understand what it was to have her sins forgiven why she couldn't understand what it is to have everlasting life why she couldn't know what it is to serve god and to live for god and to wait for the promise of eternity in heaven that the bible says i have not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them who are, who, who, are, who are loved and called according to his purposes. She couldn't understand any of that, but he had to touch this one thing that separated her from all that, her sins. You have had five husbands, and he who you now have is not your husband. So what does, what does, again, he touches her heart, he speaks to her, he reveals her life, he reveals what she's thinking. And he says to her, um, so she says to him, um, the woman said unto her, I him, sir, I perceive that you are the prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, 
And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. What is she thinking? Right away, she thinks of her sin and she's thinking of religion. Which is the right religion? What do I have to do to make God forget about my sins? Because you can't get rid of them. What do I have to do to make God forget about them or overlook them? Nothing is the answer, of course. Nothing is the answer. But every person looks for that. I need to do something. I need to, some, to do something to, do, to show God that I deserve to be saved. I deserve to have my sins forgiven. It's what everybody thinks. He touched her heart. And, and Jesus said, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what, what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. He tells her, my dear woman, you don't need to do anything. In fact, it's already done for all of us now. She didn't see what God was going to do to take away her sins, but we all see it. We read about it in the Bible. Jesus died on the cross for sinners. You don't have to do anything about it, he says to her. What you need is salvation. You need those gods, you need those sins forgiven. You need God to be able to pardon you for all those sins that you have committed. That's what every person on earth needs. In fact, it says, this is a faithful saying in, in um, First Timothy, this is a faithful saying and worthy that everybody would accept it, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And you know what? That's how, that's what he did. That's what he came to do. That's why he came to save sinners, to save this woman and to save every sinner that ever walked on the face of the earth if they would have him. But the big question is, Am I a sinner? That's the big question. You know, I fought for a long time. I thought somehow I could do something to show to God that I deserve to be saved. But finally, I came to understand that, no, there's nothing. I'm guilty. And God has said that he will punish sin. And if I die in my sins, Jesus said, and I believed it, where he is, there I can never come. But then in, in verse 23, he says, but the hour is coming and is now when the true worshiper, I think if you want to emphasize a verse and a word in this verse, emphasize the next one. The true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He is seeking for people to worship him. Even though we've all sinned, because he has provided salvation for everyone through, the, through what the Lord Jesus suffered on that cross. He tells us in the Old Testament that all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all sinned. We have turned everyone to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, the sins of us all. My dear friend, can you picture him as he hung on that cross, dying, dying with, without sin? You know, it says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But Jesus never sinned, so how could he die if he never sinned? He didn't die for one sin of his own, but he paid the wages for sin. So if it wasn't his sin, then whose sin was it? And you know, it was in that moment when the Lord Jesus spoke those words, I'm going to say, well, she says in the next verse, 
The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. Did she know he was called Jesus Christ? When he has come, he will tell us all things. He was telling her everything about herself. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto, unto you am he. Did she believe him that time? Well, he said he was going to give her living water. He, she, and then it says in the next two verses down, she left her water pot at the well. And she went away to tell the townspeople. She didn't need that water then. Of course, she needed water. But it wasn't that water she was interested in. She had seen the one who had come to save sinners. She had realized I'm a sinner and I need salvation. And she had seen him as the one who had come to save, sin save sinners. You know, the Lord Jesus said in, in John chapter 6, he that believes on me has everlasting life. And that's, is that true? That's what, the, what that woman believed. It said, it, we know that the Messiah come is coming, which is called the Christ. And when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said, I that speak unto you am he. He that believes on me has everlasting life. And you know, we read that she went out to the people in the village and she didn't only tell them uh, the, the uh, he did, she didn't only tell them, I don't think, that he told her everything that she had done, that she laid open to her the emptiness of her life and the frustration with religion and the necessity of salvation, of facing her sins, and the rea reality that he was the one who had come to die and save, die and save, die for her and save her. But she also said, the, the people said to her afterwards, now we believe not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So they're saying, yes, it's true what you said. He is the Christ, the Savior of the world. She knew him to be the Savior of the world because he had come to a well with a poor woman struggling up that hill every day with a load of water and no hope in life to reveal himself to her as her savior. How about you tonight? He's come to meet everyone. Perhaps tonight we hope that he meets someone in this need. Thank you.